Welcome to the Our Show once again on Anidi TV. Today I sit here with the son of Group Captain Albert Kwamina Jones Mensa. Welcome, Mr. Jones. Our uh, most excellent uh, lawyer, barrister, Andy. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Mm -hmm. I, the Vice President of Ghana Armed Forces Children Association, right. felt I had to take the opportunity to furthermore uh, elaborate mm -hmm. on the advocacy we stand for to represent the children of the Ghana Armed Forces, um, both commissioned and non-commissioned officers' children, mm -hmm. and also, and most importantly, mm -hmm. uh, children who um, benefited from living in many of the military insta installations mm -hmm. in Ghana, mm -hmm. Takoradi, Kumasi, mm -hmm. Tamale, mm -hmm. Volta region, mm -hmm. and Accra, mm -hmm. the main one being Bema Camp, okay. of where I lived and grew up, spent most of my childhood life. Your father is a very noble man. Yes. Uh, Mr. Albert Jones Mensa. Yes, Group Captain uh, Jones Mensa. Yes. And I understand that before one is named on the block at uh, Yes. The Bema Camp. Yes. Uh, it means that you, you must be a very highly decorated personnel of the armed forces. That's correct. Who was your father? All right. Group Captain Jones Mensa uh, um, grew up in Second D, right. Isikado, okay. um, I believe, and uh, later on joined his parents in mm -hmm. Kumasi, okay. Fantinu Town. Right. But uh, when I came to his life, mm -hmm. or in my early memory years mm -hmm. um, was in Takoradi mm -hmm. um, um, airport uh, residential area mm -hmm. in Takoradi where I had my early memories. And from there, um, we moved on to Tamale mm -hmm. uh, where he became the commander, air traffic control commander mm -hmm. in, in Tamale. Mm -hmm. Then I had grown up a bit, so mm -hmm. I had wonderful experiences mm -hmm. to be part of the um, uh, airborne Force mm -hmm. Primary School, mm -hmm. which still um, is still there, there okay. current today. Okay. Yes. But but um, he he became. I mean, he, when was he actually appointed into the armed forces? If you can recall, I cannot recall. Yeah. But uh, I know it was in the um, early sixties, okay. uh, where he came to be trained as an air traffic controller in. Uh, England, mm -hmm. where I believe mm -hmm. he met my mom. My mom mm -hmm. was working in Ghana Airways. Mm -hmm. um, then before that, I think it was British Overseas mm -hmm. Airlines. Mm -hmm. And so when he was stationed in Takoradi, mm -hmm. um, I think that was when they started dating. Mm -hmm. And uh, they got married. Mm -hmm. um, we got some beautiful pictures of their wedding um, okay. near the Air Force Station okay. um, mess okay. in Takoradi. All right. Now, he would have served or he would have been in the military during the time of Buzia. Yes. Not, not so much of the Afrifa, but the, the during the Buzia administration. I'm sure. Um, how was the country like? Well, you probably were um, younger than I was young. Yeah. Um, I, because my parents did tr do a lot of traveling overseas, okay. my grandmother uh, uh, brought me up. Right. But um, as a market trader, my grandmother was, was a market trader. Okay. Where she used to, after school, I used to attend a, um, a school called Snaps Preparatory School. Okay. Where even I was a, a border student. Okay. And uh, Ghana um, was a vibrant country, um, mm -hmm. but I think money and the economics of the country was not that good. So there was a little bit of social unrest. Okay. And uh, which led to the um, Achampon campaign, and Canal Achampon's campaign, which led to the overthrow of the government, okay. the politically elected government okay. of Buzia. Okay. I believe you spent some early teen, teenhood in Ghana, um, yeah. or probably your teens yes. in Ghana, yes. and therefore witnessed so many of these coups yes. over and over, yes. especially being the a child of, of, a military of, officer. of your father. Yes. Um, the Achampon takeover. Yes. Was it bloody? The Achampon takeover, comparatively, I would say it wasn't bloody. No. Okay. It was quite a peaceful one. Okay. 
Mm. After he he um, he took over, how was the country then? I think, the from my point of view, I'm yeah. not non-political. I yeah. must say that. Yeah. But I think uh, it was an era where Ghana identified itself as a country mm -hmm. capable of being self-sufficient okay. in the agricultural um, industry okay. uh, due to the massive campaign mm -hmm. on a national level. Mm -hmm. We became self-sufficient. Right. I mean, everybody had a lot of back garden mm -hmm. where they could be able to grow their own fruits and vegetables. I see. And uh, for the first time, I think, in mm -hmm. my early memories, mm -hmm. Ghana was able to export corn, mm -hmm. beef, mm -hmm. um, um, beans, mm -hmm. um, soya beans, mm -hmm. um, fruit and vegetables mm -hmm. to neighboring um, mm -hmm. African countries. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a beautiful era. Mm -hmm. um, However, mm -hmm. I then was not politically inclined to um, argue, mm -hmm. to say, no, the, there must be a change. But mm -hmm. my seniors, mm -hmm. you know, the the grown students mm -hmm. at that time, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, stood up to say that there must be a change of uh, mm -hmm. government, which okay. led to uh, the political unrest in Ghana. Again, during the Champions regime. Yes. A champion was obviously overthrown yes um there was a cleanup exercise there was a cleanup exercise. on that fateful day where was your father uh, my father was arrested and kept in the guard room oh. of the air force station most officers were arrested most, why, why, why do you think your father was arrested um because in the military we have a chain of command mm -hmm. and like in any institution yeah. even in a manufacturing yeah. environment we mm -hmm. have managers we have directors mm -hmm. managers and supervisors yeah. so attaining the rank of a squadron leader or mm -hmm. major in the military um, army terms mm -hmm. um, you are a supervisor mm -hmm. and uh, the other ranks and mm -hmm. non-commissioned officers mm -hmm. answer up to you so mm -hmm. for the political superiors who mm -hmm. had overthrown Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the current government, mm -hmm. they had to ensure that mm -hmm. all supervisors, mm -hmm. managers mm -hmm. were kept at bay mm -hmm. so that they could have full control mm -hmm. of the whole um, uh, governing system of the country at that mm -hmm. time. Okay. And, and you you and your mother and siblings were still based at uh, uh, Burma Camp? Burma Camp, yeah. You were Juba Vilax. Okay. And you guys were not arrested at all? At no. I mean, some of us were in school. Okay. Um, we came back home. Okay. And the whole uh, environment had changed because you, you would come back and notice that your next door neighbor is no longer there mm -hmm. because maybe he had been displaced. Right. Based on one or two reasons, of mm -hmm. which sometimes I would regard it as petty. You know, okay. um, um, you you come back mm -hmm. um, from school and notice that your friend is no more. Okay, uh, parents no more um, due to the revolution. On the very day, were you in the boarding school? Or I still? was in the boarding school. Yes, okay, but so I did. Not, you you came home. Yes, but my junior, my junior siblings, Henry yeah, yeah. and uh, Ishmael, yeah. um, were at home right. um, when the incident happened. Mm -hmm. um, my, my, my parents, mm -hmm. then I think we had one officer called Group Captain Kwanza visiting from Takurade. Mm -hmm. I think he might have been the station commander in Takurade. Okay. Uh, he flew the Sky Van okay. at that time before he went on to fly the F-27. All right. Um, and during that time, he was visiting, staying with my parents. Mm -hmm. And when the incident happened, where they all had to hide for mm -hmm. a couple of days, and I, until later on, my, my, my dad had to report and have himself arrested and kept in the guard room at the Air Force Station. How was your mother taking the news? Uh, my mother, you know, is the motherly type, loved the husband, very, very much. Well, the I two of them, the yes, the two of them were very compatible. They okay. loved each other. Right. Truly, deeply. Yeah. They, many occasions, they were voted the uh, best 
couple mm. within the Air Force. Mm. Uh, mm. Maybe how, how, how long did your mother, uh, your father stay uh, in detention? What was he uh, kept uh, in detention for? A couple of days. A couple of days. When he came back. Yes, yes. Okay. What, obviously, on the day the, the execution took place, all right, um, mm. the exiting of the We had fled Burma camp. At the time? On yes, the we, day. Yeah, we had fled Burma camp too. We were completely displaced. My mother removed us from Burma camp. Okay. And went to live in our uncompleted mm -hmm. house in Tishinunga Estate. Okay. Fair junction. Okay. Next door to Mrs. Afrifa's house, General Afrifa's wife. Okay. Um, it was it was supposed to be a four bedroom uh, bungalow. Mm -hmm. All right. It wasn't completed, no wall, mm -hmm. no gate, mm -hmm. no toilet facility. Okay. Right. Uh, but my mom um, couldn't handle the sort of violence which was happening in the camp. So we were forced to go and live in Tishinuga Estates. Yes. You, you were living next door to the late Afrifa's wife. Yes. Did you ever have any interaction? Yes, after? Mrs. Afrifa was a second mother. Okay. Uh, to me, uh, All right. when I had completed my O levels, mm -hmm. she personally took me to okay. Laboni Secondary School right. to uh, commence my uh, A levels. Okay. Um, however, uh, because mm -hmm. I had fallen in love with agriculture. Right. Um, because when we were displaced from Burma camp, right. we had to start growing our own food stuff. Okay. So through that, I fell in love with agriculture. Okay. So luckily, I got admission to Quadaso Agri College, okay. where I spent two years to study um, modern agricultural I sciences. See, that's why you love the operation feed yourself of a champion. But but <laughs> that's why you love it. But w at any point, did she express her concerns about the execution of her husband? Uh, Mrs. Afrifa. Yes. Yes. Um, if she sits you down, yeah. uh, Mrs. Afrifa was a mother to me, yeah. I always say, and um, she had other nephews like okay. Skelly, Belisa, okay. um, who were also displaced during the coup. Right. So they had to come and stay mm. with Mrs. Afrifa. Mm. And on certain good days where she chooses to tell mm her story about mm. the gallant, mm -hmm. well-spoken, mm -hmm. highly educated mm -hmm. uh, general, mm -hmm. General FIFA, mm -hmm. you, would, you, you would be able to tell that, yes, he dearly, she dearly did love um, her husband. Mm. Um, so she was sad. Yes, of course, mm. she was sad. Co considering, I mean, you, you were a child brought up in, in I mean, those atrocities, the, the, the uh, era where a lot of bloodshed yes. uh, took place. Um, and having grown up from that point, how, how, how did you all cope? You, your siblings, um, living next door to Mrs. Afrifa. Yeah. How, how was it like after, uh, I'm sorry to put you in that sort yeah. of situation, but how was it like? How did you guys uh, maneuver that sort of... Uh, uh, Pain. Yeah. The... Um, we had no choice. It wasn't, we hadn't grown enough to be capable of mm. doing our own things. Mm -hmm. And so it was a very sad time. Mm -hmm. um, um, very sad time for us, mm. yes. But it was a blessing in disguise because it toughened us. Okay. We lived without electricity. We lived in Burma camp right. with 24-7 electricity. Right. We have 24-7 water, mm -hmm. um, you know, nice sanitary system. Right. But all of a sudden, we yeah. are, we were, we, yes, we were displaced, went to live at a place where there was no electricity, right. no water, no toilets. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had to adapt. Okay. And uh, every morning, mm -hmm. you know, I'll be carrying five gallon drums to mm. go and fetch water mm. at Mrs. Afrifa's house, mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, it was a tough time, but I think that made me what I became and even better when I went to the agricultural college mm. in Kumasi. When there was years. quest and cry for let the blood flow, yeah, were you part of that movement? No. Was it actually true that people were crying for the blood? Yes. The, 
the politically motivated student of that time. Mm. Um, I've heard one of um, your and watched one of your mm. previous mm. recordings mm -hmm. with Boachi, uh, you know, Major Boachi Boachi Jan. Jan, yeah. You know, mm. they, 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 they became a, an era where mm. there were political ideologies mm -hmm. uh, being implanted in young students' minds. Mm -hmm. Incromal came with an ideology of Pan-Africanism. Mm -hmm. um, you know, certain political errors came with certain um, mm. uh, communist ideologies. Mm -hmm. So part of the let the blood flow mm -hmm. campaign and regime mm -hmm. must be, uh, you know, uh, socialist or communist mm -hmm. motivated okay. uh, mentality where they felt the bridge between mm -hmm. the super rich, mm -hmm. the rich yeah. and uh, the poor right. were too vast, okay. vast. Okay. Yeah. and hence uh, they had to change the national dynamics of distribution of wealth, right. employment, right. education opportunity. Yeah health opportunity, mm -hmm. the whole dynamics, one way or the other, had to happen because the social engineering mm -hmm. developed by the British, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a specialist in this mm -hmm. industry, do forgive me, but this is how I saw it, mm -hmm. that, you know, the way the elite, privileged, mm -hmm. academic mm -hmm. professionals mm -hmm. and the middle class Mm -hmm. professionals mm -hmm. and uh, lower socioeconomic groups mm -hmm. who had nothing but true free education mm -hmm. of which I benefited one mm -hmm. way or the other mm -hmm. um, had come, I've come to, to be aware mm -hmm. that look there might be, there should be a mm -hmm. political change mm -hmm. a change which will bring mm -hmm. opportunities based on merits mm -hmm. and, and that I believe Mm -hmm. might be part of the philosophies mm -hmm. gained from the let the blood flow. Well, yes. Would you have, would you consider, or at the time, consider yourselves as privileged, as Boachi Jan stated in his interview, that most senior officers, children and family we were, were privileged. You were privileged. We were you privileged. Consider that you were privileged. We were privileged. Okay. Um, Burma Camp is a city of its own. On, on, on its own, yeah. can have self-sustained okay. um, facilities, okay. utilities mm -hmm. for over a year without going outside mm -hmm. the perimeters of mm -hmm. Burma Camp, the likes of Juba, Juba Villas. Mm -hmm. We had 24-7 electricity. Mm -hmm. okay. right? If you just travel out of Burma Camp, mm -hmm. two miles radius, mm -hmm. Labadi, mm -hmm. Osu, mm -hmm. Teshi, mm -hmm. a lot of them didn't have electricity. A lot of them didn't have running water. And even current today, mm -hmm. I hear people, mm -hmm. because of lack of mm -hmm. uh, toilet facilities, mm -hmm. have to mm -hmm. use the open space. Mm -hmm. And I think these are some of the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, discomforting mm -hmm. uh, things that has led to mm -hmm. these political um, I, I like your honesty um, because um, obviously most, but your father was recalled or called to serve in the AFC. Yes. And, and he refused? He declined. Why is that? Um, Why did you think he refused to join the AFC? Personally, I think he was a boy from the old school. Okay. And the AFRC mm -hmm. was a sudden movement mm -hmm. of aggressive mm -hmm. command for change, mm -hmm. which he didn't want to be part of. Mm -hmm. You know, during the, mm -hmm. the coup era, the revolution, you would believe or see officers mm -hmm. carrying pistols. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my dad never came home with a pistol because my mother would not permit it. My mother would not permit having her arms mm -hmm. in the house. How did he survive in the army 
after refusing to join the AFC well, till, till, well, well, till he passed? I happened? think mm -hmm. he, he, because of his honesty, integrity, transparency, he managed to sustain, okay. but diversified his strength through learning, okay. education, right. development, mm -hmm. and he was then relocated to other departments, i.e. training and development, like the senior staff college mm -hmm. in Teshi, where he became an instructor and further moved on to become an instructor mm -hmm. in Nigeria, which mm -hmm. is uh, Command Staff College, mm -hmm. Jaji in Kaduna, okay. where I had the privilege of visiting there as well. Yeah, would, beautiful would, settlement. Would, would you classify or would you, would you class his survival in the army as lucky? Considering that most people that were called, including Sarko Diado yes. and all that, um, that refused to join yeah. at some point were somehow eliminated. Um, yeah. Your father survived it. Without, he he without, survived it. Yeah. You know, he wasn't the type where he taught if you can't fight them, join them. Yeah. You don't have to join them, but you can play your own game. Okay. But in a clever, non-involved okay. um, way. Wow. Yes. He survived it. Um, and... Uh, came out, retired with full colors, mm. uh, moved on to become the chief executive officer of VAG, mm. of which I'll be very much happy to talk about of course. on your program. I will, I will because give you that he's, play, he's played a major role. Okay. A lot of officers and non-commissioned officers mm -hmm. live a lifetime mm -hmm. career, mm -hmm. which is um, over 20, 25 years, 30 mm -hmm. years. Your father said over 31 years. Correct. Right. And they come out and they become very displaced. Okay. Because they are not civilians. They've okay. been militarized or yeah. been, you know, mm -hmm. um, institutionalized mm -hmm. for over 30 years. And to come out in the real world, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of them are unable to integrate. Mm -hmm. It is for that reason we decided to form the Armed Forces Children Association. Association. Um, to advocate, mm -hmm. represent, yeah. support mm -hmm. the less privileged. Mm -hmm. um, we grew up being officers' children. Mm -hmm. That is a very segregative settlement as well. Right. We may need to talk about another time yeah. because there's the divide and less rule. Okay. You know, the junior officers, yeah. the non commissioned officers, right. different settlement, mm -hmm. different settlement for the mm -hmm. junior officers, mm -hmm. different settlement for the senior. So mm -hmm. there's that, you know. Social divide even mm. within the barracks. I learned you couldn't even date, um, you know, a different rank's daughter yes. if, if you were a yeah. junior rank. Yeah, uh, I mean, I mean yeah. was that, that, that the is case? very discriminatory. I mean, um, was that the case? Yes. Yes. So, what was Rollins right in terms okay. of, so of his I'll position? Give well, the, 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 one the, way or the other. Okay. I would not uh, mm. dispute that. Mm. Um, but. I went to Burma Camp Complex, okay. um, an open school right. for even civilian children to attend, mm -hmm. uh, non-commissioned officers' children mm -hmm. to attend, mm -hmm. uh, commissioned officers' children to mm -hmm. attend. Mm -hmm. As children, mm -hmm. we integrate, mm -hmm. we fall in love, mm -hmm. we become friends, mm -hmm. and uh, as you are growing up through your teens, you may choose or a young lady mm. um, whose father may be a yes, corporal yes, yes. or a sergeant yeah. or a major or a colonel, you may choose to go and visit. But there's that line. You, there's a boundary. You know, there's always the glass. Mm. You know, it is there that, oh, you can visit, but, mm. you know. Wow. Yes. The army is like a sort of like a brotherhood or something, because it's like this is the first time I'm hearing something like that. Um, it's like yes, it's, you, a, it's you, an you, institution. You, yeah, you guys have your own. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It, 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 rules it is, and yeah, traditions, traditions, and, and yes, culture and culture. Yes, uh, a non-commissioned officer cannot decide to have his wedding yeah. engagement right. at the officer's mess. No. Wow. No. 
But this is your father was a senior officer, yeah. and yet you you are the vice president of the Soja Bar movement. Yeah, uh, you've teamed up with Marina yeah. uh, and 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 a whole lot of people, and you are doing massive uh, contribution. Yes, uh, was it because of your mother's decision to move away from Bemacom that brought you that uh, um, sort of a humble beginning? For, yeah, yeah. For, for you to now mingle and associate yourself with uh, all the rest and now start a movement where you are now going to meet most junior officers children correct and help them yes w what was this all about? i think it is true my educational development okay. in the uk okay which gave me a much more diverse okay idea about social integration all right um I went to Bradford University where I studied um, community studies, right. community development. Right. I became the first chief executive officer mm. for Bradford Action for Refugees. Mm. Mm. But going back to the Soja Bab movement, mm -hmm. um, I met this lovely lady, mm -hmm. Marina, mm -hmm. whose father was an air vice marshal. Mm -hmm. My father knew Elvis Michel Odati Bama Bama. very well. Okay. That was his senior. Mm -hmm. uh, at his retirement year, actually, my dad was the one responsible for him. Okay. His because he welfare. Over, yeah, over yes. the back. Yeah. And through that, um, I got to know of Marina, mm -hmm. who said, Michael, mm -hmm. you know, we need to come together mm -hmm. and help our siblings. So she said, Michael, I would like to form an organization called the Armed Forces Children Association, mm -hmm. and I would like you to join mm -hmm. and be part of it. Okay. okay. So it was true that, you know, she had a vision. Okay. I liked her motive. I liked okay. the objectives. Okay. And the aims. Okay. And so while in England, mm -hmm. um, she was busy. Mm -hmm. She had a vision. She said, Michael, mm -hmm. I really want to go and do something in Ghana for mm -hmm. the less privileged mm -hmm. siblings of ours mm -hmm. who um, weren't as opportune as we were. Yeah. I said, great. I would like to be part of it. So would you consider to yourself to be the vice president? Mm -hmm. Say yes, mm -hmm. I'll be part of it. Mm -hmm. We've done a lot of charity work. Mm -hmm. um, we've done donations to yeah. um, the retired non-commissioned officers right. who were residing at Legion Village, but because of urban development, mm -hmm. they had to be relocated right. somewhere in Pokuase. Okay. And we got together some basic essentials, mm -hmm. basic essentials, mm -hmm. bare sheets, shirts, mm -hmm. socks, shoes. Mm -hmm. They did. They had served a country for 25 years. A lot of them had dismembered bodies because they had, you know, mm -hmm. lost arms, limbs mm -hmm. through war, and their wives had mm -hmm. passed on. Mm -hmm. uh, their children had mm -hmm. moved on mm -hmm. and were alone. And we felt our movement should be focused mm -hmm. on helping not only the children, our siblings, mm -hmm. but also their yeah. their parents yeah. yes so we developed a philosophy, a philosophy where we felt that maybe there is a program to help mm -hmm. um, soldiers mm -hmm. army personnel mm -hmm. when they are going into retirement okay. to f have an occupation okay. before they come out right. but whether that is being very proactive mm -hmm. i don't know okay. but that is going to be our next stage okay. through collaboration right. with our american counterparts yeah. and the british legion okay. to see whether yeah. we can assist furthermore okay. in helping officers who have served country okay. when they come into retirement yeah. they could mm. continue working wow yes what what are some of the challenges you've been facing since forming Africa? i mean you would have probably met people who were not happy with um even even marina maybe the likes of yourself yeah. um rollins yeah. um, i mean the is part of it yeah i mean how, how do you children 
com I mean, coordinate and bring them on board together because you you are a lot now. Yes. How, how are you con consoling each other yes. uh, and making sure they understand? You understand? Yes. They understand yes. Africa. We all have a story to tell. Okay. Some positive, some negative. Right. But the most important point, mm -hmm. myself and Marina always like to state mm -hmm. that we are, will always be there mm -hmm. to hear their side of the story. Mm -hmm. We are good. We are not political. Mm -hmm. We understand the scenario. Mm -hmm. We all encountered. We were schoolmates mm -hmm. from primary school. Mm -hmm. Your father could be mm -hmm. in the area of mm -hmm. and your father refuses to be part of that yeah, campaign. Yeah, of course. But that shouldn't separate us. Mm -hmm. And we all have our very sad. I mean, for instance, just last week, mm -hmm. we lost one of our comrades, oh, sorry, um, daughter yeah. of Colonel Jackson. Mm -hmm. Colonel Jackson was the commissioner for. Works and housing okay. during their champion time. All right. uh, her daughter was a major player mm -hmm. in our rep representation okay. in Ghana. Right. Her name is Dor Doris Jackson. Right. Uh, so rest in peace. Yes. Very active representative for us in Ghana. Okay. Yes. Um, so, as it stands, um, it's true love, mm -hmm. empathy. Yes. Sympathetic understanding to people's needs. Right. That has made people like myself, Marina, and our other colleagues uh -huh. who are executives in the UK yeah. to, to show the same kind of love. Yes. Okay. By giving a helping hand mm -hmm. and also an ad advocacy mm -hmm. to ask the current mm -hmm. senior officers mm -hmm. for support mm -hmm. and recognition. Great. Great. And you, you've done tremendously well. Just before we get to our next stage, yes. this question. Yeah. We we'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. Maintaining a presence at the forefront of a global issue with the desire to help others come to a resolve in personal and business affairs is why Andy D. Legal and Immigration Associate was established. Yes. We specialize in overseas British passport applications, bills and temporary admission, deportation and detention cases. The profound pattern in achieving positive results with fragile cases in immigration, nationality, European Union and human rights law, adoption, marriage, divorce, litigation and so on, up to date, has been broken and that is why our client base continues to expand. We also do representations at the UK border agencies and overseas consulate, human rights law and settlement and leave to remain applications. We have the right keys to unlock any case across the spectrum of law locally in London and across the borders in Ghana where our other branches are established. We are located at 44 Broadway, Stratford, E15 1XH. Our telephone number is 0203. One three zero zero seven five one. Natural mineral water comes with a natural thirst quenching relief. No wonder it leaves you yearning for more and more. And these natural mineral water, no one's papa. Welcome back. So, thank you. Uh, obviously, um, what do you think of the kidnap exercise that took place? in Ghana, do you think, looking back in time, looking at the work you're doing, especially because a lot evolves around those children, do, do you think it's, it was worth it? It had to happen. I think it had to happen. There's been the negatives, there's been the positives, mm -hmm. but Ghana has moved on. 
Okay. We are better people now. Mm -hmm. We have better understanding that having a politically elected government mm -hmm. is much more diverse mm -hmm. for the people mm -hmm. rather than having a military intervention. Right. Have you have you come across other children who have just refused to join Africa? Yes. Who wouldn't want to hear yes. anything at all? They want justice. Yes. How do you deal with it? Well, um, we always call them. We never let go by saying, stay at your little corner and keep crying. Mm -hmm. But we, we keep calling them to say, tell us your story. You know, the trauma mm -hmm. you went through of losing your dad mm -hmm. or being displaced mm -hmm. suddenly many a times cannot be recovered mm -hmm. but as we've grown mm -hmm. and matured mm -hmm. we've become parents ourselves mm -hmm. and we know when our children need love mm -hmm need a shoulder to cry on so we being i would say maybe the third generation of armed forces children who have a better stead mm -hmm. to be welcoming mm -hmm. for our siblings to come on to us and tell us their story mm -hmm. And through that way, mm -hmm. they develop an outlet and maybe find a way to let go, mm -hmm. come on board, share their story, and encourage others who still are adamant and refuse to join us um, on this crusade to be of help to the current generation mm -hmm irrespective of the appearance rank, mm -hmm. but are still less privileged. Mm -hmm. There is no equality in education in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Education is a necessity. Mm -hmm. Even though the government has offered free education, however, the quality of education being offered is quite questionable. I'm non-political. Mm -hmm. um, I must commend our president, mm -hmm. His yeah. Excellency. Yeah. Nana I was just going to come to that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. For the great job he's doing, right. offering free education, mm -hmm. healthcare, mm -hmm. first and second world countries mm -hmm. do not take such daring act mm -hmm. to provide healthcare provision free mm -hmm. utility, electricity, mm -hmm. water mm -hmm. during a pandemic, mm -hmm. I must take my hat off to His Excellency. Um, not also to forget the current, mentioned the current Chief of Defense Staff. Mm -hmm. um, I must also commend mm -hmm. uh, Air Marshal Samson Oji, mm -hmm. who named a very prominent building mm -hmm. after my father. Okay. Group Captain Jones means at the Jones Mesa Lodge. Okay. Next to the Air Force. Right. Uh, station. Uh, right. Mess. Right. Yeah. This uh, government is very particular with the armed forces. Yes. I think uh, they, they, they are paying too very good attention to them. And have you reached out to the government, the current government, for assistance with Africa? Um, not as yet. We, okay. we wanted to um, start our own charity from home. Charity okay. begins at home. home. Yeah. So most of the contributions and collections mm -hmm. we've done ourselves, myself and Marina. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. Marina, Marina and myself, uh, through approaching colleges, mm -hmm. schools in England, managed to secure 120 laptops, computers, okay. right. 3,000 books, right. of which we donated 
to the base primary school in Accra. Okay. We are yet to do more of these. Mm -hmm. And I think giving a book mm -hmm. to a young person mm -hmm. to have the opportunity and share that dream mm -hmm. that there shall be a future. Mm -hmm. The future shall always be bright. Okay. It's a wonderful concept. And it's that concept, myself and our president, mm -hmm. Mrs. Marina Kingsley Yina, mm -hmm. has in our hearts and mind mm -hmm. to fully mm -hmm. execute and bring on board all children of the armed forces mm -hmm. globally, America, Germany, mm -hmm. Switzerland, mm -hmm. Africa, Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. South Africa, mm -hmm. Egypt, mm -hmm. to come together and mobilize and show that yes, what we have benefited from our parents to a career privilege, mm -hmm. we want to give back. We want to pay back. So I'm calling on to all the armed forces, children, police, prisons, air force, navy, um, have I forgotten, army, okay. to come together as one. Okay and achieve our goal and dream. Thank you very much. We Thank must you. come together as one and achieve a common goal. This is where time will bring us. This is the hour show. Remember to subscribe on our YouTube channel, Facebook, and follow us on Instagram. Thank you, have a good day, and goodbye. Thank you. <laughs>